At Display, we put the content creators first. When advertisers pay Display, you can earn a 50% award rate on the ad revenue generated from your content. We also provide a marketplace for creators to sell products and share in the profits. Creators can receive award payouts based on the affiliate commission. The rewards you earn from ad revenue and affiliate commissions will be added to your Display account every day. Display provides you a 50% award rate from the ad revenue generated from your content while social giants share nothing. We believe creators should be rewarded for their work. Download Display from your app store today. Welcome back to Today on Display and welcome to Display Trivia. Folks, they say it's all who you know, right? Well, I beg to differ, because in trivia, it's not all who you know, it's all what you know. And I'm ready to put all that to the test. Now, I saw earlier in the chat, we've got a lot of H cuties here. Welcome, welcome to the, I'd say dark side, but really this is the bright side. This is where the good stuff happens. People are supporting each other, making money. And uh, yeah, your nickname here is Displayas. Yes, you're my Displayas. So now, if you're just tuning in, tonight's pot is $2,500. And here are the rules, pretty simple. You'll have 10 seconds to pick your answer and choose wisely because once you tap, there's no going back. If you miss one, you will no longer be eligible for the cash prize, but stay in the game because you can keep playing along for fun. And it is, it's fun. Tap those answers, see how you do. Get ready for the next game. In the meantime, let's get ready for the game by doing a practice question. So tell me, what's your ideal day off? Doing nothing all day? Playing video games? Spending time with family? Going on an adventure? Mmm, sign me up for the doing nothing option. And um, can I add cheese to that? Yeah, and I, I would like that delivered directly to me. Yeah, I mean, I'd get up, but I, I don't want to. Doing nothing, remember? Sounds like my day tomorrow. That is what I need. TGIF, thank goodness. All right, what are you all choosing? We're looking like, okay, mostly spending time with family, followed pretty closely by video games, and then a lot of doing nothing. Yeah, no adventures here. We got all the adventure that we need right here in this quiz, Monday through Friday, right? Yes. All right, so. Speaking of adventure, I think it's time to do this. Let's go on a little adventure together. Let's quiz. Here we go. Time to trivia. Question one. Complete this alliterative saying. Sail the seven seas. Sail the seven seas. Sail the seven seas candies. Complete this alliterative saying. Sail the seven seas. Sail the seven seas. Sail the seven seas candies. If you see something, say something, right? Oh, I see something. Mm-hmm, I do. It's winnings on the horizon. As we sail to the brighter shores, just remember to keep the eyes on the prize displays. Any world travelers with us today? Fun fact, there are actually way more than seven of these seas, and luckily, way more than 7% of you got this. More like 97%. Land ho! It's question two. The Judeo-Christian creation myth is found in which book of the Old Testament? Exodus, Genesis, Numbers. The Judeo-Christian creation myth is found in which book of the Old Testament? Exodus, Genesis, Numbers. I mean, you know it's the Old Testament because there's still a book of Numbers. In the New Testament, I bet everyone is walking around with all their contact info and their smartphones. I mean, I, I haven't read it yet, so please, no spoilers. Now, how do we get started here? Oh yes, that is right. Genesis is the OG book of the Bible and 94% of you are creating some success for yourselves here. I love it. Question three. Of the following, what type of music is most likely to be played at a rave? Classical, EDM, jazz. Of the following, what type of music is most likely to be played at a rave? Classical, EDM, jazz. I guess this depends on how you define rave, right? Because when Mozart was making music, that was probably party music, right? Yeah, it was all the rave. I mean rage. Don't rage against the machine with this question. Work with your phone. Pick 
the right answer. 86% of you doing just that because electronic dance music is what you rave to and I'm giving you all rave reviews. Well done. Question four. What is the Manhattan subway line named in this Duke Ellington 1939 jazz standard? A, C, E. What is the Manhattan subway line named in this Duke Ellington 1939 jazz standard? A, C, E. Okay, technically, this subway line runs through Brooklyn also, but that is not where Duke Ellington was trying to get to. He wasn't a 2010 hipster trying to find an overpriced coffee shop or an artisanal speakeasy art installation. No, Duke was trying to get to Harlem and I'm pretty sure he made it because that was one of the jazz centers of the US. It was popping off. And the A train is what got him there. 78% of you making a connection to question five. This hair color only naturally exists in about 2% of the world's population, making it the rarest. Blonde, brown, red. This hair color only naturally exists in about 2% of the world's population, making it the rarest. Blonde, brown, red. Gentlemen prefer blondes, supposedly, but are they the rarest of them all? I mean, Snow White was a brunette, after all, and sure, she was the fairest. But I mean, it's not my fault she never got any sun. We need that vitamin D, honey. And not just from Prince Charming. Yes, someday your prince will come, but what about your own pleasure? Think about it. 93% of you raring to go with the redheads of the world. You just run weaseled yourselves into question six. All of the following are universities located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, except MIT, Harvard University, University of Cambridge. All of the following are universities located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, except MIT, Harvard University, University of Cambridge. <laughs> what, you think just because you attend one of these prestigious institutions of higher learning that you're above me? Oh wait, yeah, anyone who goes to any of these schools is like, laughably smart like I wouldn't understand anything you're saying smart like oh my god we get it you go to Harvard smart really though do any of you go to Harvard anyone tell me in the chat later I'm curious I mean because the 82 percent of you got this right which means you must be pretty smart hock the cot Harvard yard but first let's do Q7 the most recent iteration in the Wonder Woman franchise features a lead actress from which region? South America, Middle East, Scandinavia. The most recent iteration in the Wonder Woman franchise features a lead actress from which region? South America, Middle East, Scandinavia. Here's my hot take. All women? Wonder Women. Women can literally create life inside their bodies. Like, Excuse me? That is some sci-fi stuff. And even women who don't ever want to have children, also great. Enduring longer bathroom lines since caveman times, I'm sure. And higher pain tolerance in general. My sister from another mister that we're looking for here, and that 83% of you got, is Gal Gadot, a native Israeli who is killing it in Hollywood. No, really, that song Imagine? It's dead now. Question eight. Which is not a character played by this Chicago-born Juilliard trained actor? Daniel Hillard, Harmon Goldman, Phil Connors. Which is not a character played by this Chicago-born Juilliard trained actor? Daniel Hillard, Harmon Goldman, Phil Connors. This is gonna be hard because I never learned character names in movies, even if they're the title character. Like here. Finding that little Kleinfish, the wizard of that green city, the redheaded orphan. See, I'm just no good, but how about movie titles like Mrs. Doubtfire or Birdcage? Any of those ring a bell? Robin Williams starred as all of these characters except for Phil Connors, AKA Bill Murray in Groundhog Day. 80% of you got the part. Get ready for question nine. This author's reputed last words were supposedly a comment on the decor of the room in which she was staying in Paris. Proust, 
Wild Beckett. This author's reputed last words were supposedly a comment on the decor of the room in which he was staying in Paris. Proust, Wild Beckett. Hey, at least he got to die in Paris. I mean, there's worse places to die, like Newark, New Jersey, or the line at the DMV. And it's true, these last words are not necessarily confirmed, but Urban legend does tell us that this writer who penned The Importance of Being Earnest said, this wallpaper and I are fighting a duel to the death. Either it goes or I do. Well said, Oscar Wilde, and well chosen 71% of you. Let's close up this chapter by moving on to the final question. Question 10. All of the following philosophers have inspired or invoked versions of Occam's razor, except Aristotle, Immanuel Kant, Isaac Newton. All of the following philosophers have inspired or invoked versions of Occam's razor, except Aristotle, Immanuel Kant, Isaac Newton. Let's cut to the chase here. Occam's razor? Not an actual razor. Nope. You're not going to find this medieval Franciscan friar in a barber shop. You will, however, hear about his ideas in a philosophy survey because this idea has been used to help explain a whole slew of other philosophical ideas by tons of different people. The only guy on this list who couldn't get behind it, who can't, Immanuel Kant. Yeah, that's who. But 57% of you could, and you did. Occam's razor states that entities should not be multiplied beyond necessity. But look at all of you multiplying that money in your pockets. Yes, you came, you slayed, you displayed your knowledge, and you got pa 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 paid. We'll see you next week when we'll kick off the week with Peter Alexandru, who will be introducing us to his company, We Are Actors, which helps links talent